Green game taking over, that's a promise, not a threat. Uppercut, season, north top, you stop breathing. Yeah, yeah, what's good, yo? Welcome to another episode of Real Talk, where, as always, if shit's real, we talk about it. Yo, I'm your host for tonight, Pat Scorpio, the only representative. And as always, I got my man with me. I'm going to let him introduce himself. Yo, what it do is LB, Lauderdale Boss, aka Visa Shutterworth, the guy, go artist. World still a op, ring game, radio.com, in the building, Monday night boxing talk. Yay, what it do? <laughs> Yes, sir. You know, ring gang in the house forever and always. And as always, I got my other man with me. I'm going to let him introduce himself. Hey, yo. What's good, y'all? Ring who this is. Your boy, King P. Bodega P. Bodega Boxing Building. Ring gang radio all day. Let's go. Got a lot of fights to talk about. Should be fun. Let's get it. So, um, Who's banned? I mean, you know, a certain you-know-who that got to the chopper isn't coming. So I don't got to worry about him. <laughs> but... This dude, for a week, you can't come because now with this, I'm going to see all this this uh, clip, and I don't want to see this dude. This dude. Hey, you know they got your mans. They got your mans on sex assault charges. Yeah, the nigga you be hanging with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stay away. Stay away. Please. <laughs> I don't need... It's going to be overblown meme for like a week now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, I stay away from deviants. Like, remember, you know, deviants doesn't pay people. You know what I'm saying? Just, you know, just live, try to live life, though. But, you know, live life plain, you dig? And last, but certainly not least, I got my other man with me. I'm going to introduce himself. Hey, what's fly? It's fly. It's Conscious Pilot, the West Coast Adventure, number one contender, prepare for liftoff, bring in radio. Destination is not Cape Verde. You know what it is. Let's fly. Let's go. Yes, sir. I'm Conscious love. Pilot stays. He stays <laughs> elevated above the clouds. And I, re- I repeat, you know, it, it's Pilot, not Diddy's Pilot, though. And because we don't do any yeah, of that no shit. Diddy. No Diddy. I'm going to say it one time. No Diddy. Ain't, ain't no DBNC here, bro. You know what I'm saying? You know that's that's the diddler's fault. You know what I'm saying? That's where he, that's why he, he's on the run right now. You dig? But uh, yeah, man, we got uh, plenty of boxing. You know, it's coming up this weekend, man. You know, from Monday basically to Saturday. So, like I said, if you don't have any, if there's not any boxing that tickles your fancy, then you're just sol. You dig? But of course, the the biggest one of them all is pause because I just realized how that how that sounded in my head when I said that shit. Um, is the launch of one premier boxing champions on Amazon Prime, the platform. This is the first event. Good lord. Hey, bro, you all right? Huh? You all oh. right? What you, what you doing, bro? Oh, no, I'm sorry. No, nah, keep going. That's my fault. It's not me. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Oh, okay. But, uh, but yeah, you know, it's. Uh, but yeah, no, PBC, obviously, in PBC, probably, you know, it was a lot of speculation once PBC went off. You know, went off the air on Showtime last year. You know, everyone was wondering, was speculating, what was PBC's next move? And then so it was like, hey, you know, after some after weeks, you know, PBC on Prime is where it is. So yeah, man, we got a, uh, you know, a big launch, and you know, obviously they're getting ready for that. PBC's already put a whole bunch of old PBC fights on the on Amazon. You know, I, I rewatched that Crawford Spence one again because you know, it was magnificent, as well as Spence versus Thurman. Because you know, I would, you know, no, no, Spence, no, excuse me, Spence versus Porter, and then Porter versus Thurman. There we go. Because ain't no damn Thurman versus Spence. God damn it! Damn uh, shame. And then some nigga was fucking puss. Yeah. <laughs> some nigga was scary. Yeah, and uh, unfortunately. You know, that's going to be one fight that's not going to complete the whole PBC welterweight cipher. Keith Thurman versus Errol Spence. As, you know, Thurman was originally supposed to be in the main event against Tim Zhu. But as we mentioned out last week, you know, Thurman you know, officially, I think, tore his bicep tendon. Which is like, God damn it, man. Like, what the fuck was he doing to do that? I mean, like, and so it, it's looking like now... Keith Thurman's body is tell is retiring him before Keith actually. Uh, all right, all right, we're, all right. We're, not, we're not here to talk about the past. Like, uh, <laughs> let's, move, let's move forward to the car. I'm, I'm, we're yeah. not here. <laughs> yeah, because we don't know how long he's gonna be out. Like, bro, like y'all niggas keep saying retirement. Like, I mean, he got a got an injury. Like, ain't ain't Eddie Chambers still fight after his injury with his bicep? Yeah, but Thurm- like, Eddie Chambers ain't really injury prone. Or, no, not not reputation as one, 
<laughs> it just, that's a PBC fault for trying to center shit around a fragile ass dude like who. And I love Thurman as a boxer, like, but like he was the wrong guy to, you know, because they wasted all the damn promo on him. Um, sure what's did. Shit? I ain't even watch it because it's like, what's the point? And shout out to Luke. I see him like Luke, he, you know, mentioning Thurman's body is done. He might fight again, but he's not going to be the same guy. This is a seven year injury, to be honest. And he had yeah. surgery right after Danny Garcia, which he did. Yes, you know. He ain't been the same since Danny, unfortunately. It's sad. It's unfortunate. But. Yeah, you know. I mean, he was a brilliant nigga until that. You know, after that, it's just kind of like time was ticking on him. But, you know, hopefully. He should have never been fighting a dude at zoo level anyway. Like, that was always just a bad fight. Even though, you know, I would have picked him. But still. <laughs> <laughs> of course. I mean, you nigga, you're not the only one. I, I think everyone was picking, everyone was picking Thurman to zoo, like, you know, it's, even though he was a betting underdog, but it well, is it Thurman, but uh, <laughs> I wouldn't bet on him. <laughs> yes, Luki, yeah, yeah, it all started with the car accident prior to the Porter fight. Yes, you know, we know that because it, it, it messed up the Connecticut card. Yeah, that's a that's that's a memory that that's a sore memory for me. Yes, you know, I mean, Keith Wood got stopped in five rounds. Oh damn, <laughs> Luki does not even he's not even fucking right. He's like he's not even saying, like listen. That shit ain't even gonna. That's not even gonna happen. Yeah, honestly, I can, I can see that. I I can see like if Zoo was to beat um, uh, Thurman, it would have been like either five or seven rounds. But I feel like Thurman movement, like if he would have been you know on, then yeah, he could he could stretch it out. But yeah, yeah, like I can see that happening. Yeah, and then Android, of course, big fight weekend coming up. Of course, now, I know Android. Android knows this. I know this is definitely. A big fight weekend for him, but so I mean, it's gonna be good. It's gonna I mean, be it's, it's a it's a lot of boxing on, but I don't feel like it's a big fight weekend. Like it just it feels like like we got a lot of boxing on, which is great. Though. I I ain't complaining, but I don't. I just the only fight I'm really looking forward to this week is the super bad fight, really. Like. That, that, that really? Way I mean, nice. I, I mean and then maybe Roly Cruz just for fuckery's sake, but yeah, I'm not really that, looking. That, Nah, that that's not one fight. I'm I'm definitely not looking forward to that goddamn fight. But it's know, not we'll, like a it's not a barn burner. For instance, it's it's more of a like it's intriguing. It's like a, it's, it's hell intriguing. It's intriguing. Yes, it's it's like it's like Wilder Fury the first time. You're like eh, no I mean, Wilder I mean, can't really man, box. I know Fury struggling. Eh, let's see what happens. Like the thing is, is that, that one? Yeah. That's the one that has the potential to be really fun or just really. Really I, bad. I, I swore. Yeah, it's really bad. There's, there's really no in between. I, I think really and dropping that, bullet. That's what makes it know, intriguing, though. We'll talk about it later, but really dropping bullet and ha- going back to solace that makes it intriguing for me because we, you know, maybe we'll see an improved run. You know, maybe, maybe. But uh, but, but the pay per view does start with two free fights that start at 6 p.m. You know, they have two, uh, and you know, it, obviously, I mean, this is a good way to get people to like, hey, you know what? If we like the presentation on Prime, then fuck it. You know, we'll buy the pay per view. Uh, I think the pay per view is seventy nine or something like that. I have to double check on that. Damn. Yeah. Now then they're not they're not fucking around. <laughs> but the first fight on there is an interesting fight. You got Sergei Bohacek, you know, who, you know, for some reason gets knocked out a couple of fights ago and is in a position now to win another belt. Faces Brian Mendoza. And truthfully, that's a good that's a good fucking fight. I mean, that's a, that's a, that's gonna be a slugfest all the way. And this is oh, no, both these niggas get knocked out and they fighting for. No, no, Mendoza, Mendoza didn't get knocked out, but he lost no, to Zoo. No, no. Mendoza went the decision with to it's Zoo. He it was gonna be Bohachuk from Dora, which obviously both the niggas got knocked out, and we we're gonna fight for Jamel's WBC belt. But things changed. Yeah, things changed <laughs> for that yeah. one. But but that's I mean that's good. That's gonna be a hell of a fight though, because you know yeah. both guys can punch both. And this will be a bro. is especially. Has is no stranger to throw in his hand. So, what are we thinking for a prediction? How I mean, like, how long do we think this is going to last? I, I got Mendoza. Let you go first. I got Mendoza. You said Mendoza. Yeah, Mendoza or a Bohacha, a Bohacha. Yeah, I mean, I haven't seen Bohacek in a little minute, and like the Brandon Adams ass whooping is still fresh in my memory of dude. <laughs> Um, and Brian Mendoza kind of got the same tenacity as Brandon Adams. Mm-hmm. You know, he'll stay with you and he'll throw them hands. Um, I guess I'm leaning toward Mendoza, but he did lose pretty fucking clean, you know, last time. But that's Zoo, Zoo a beast. But um, 
I yeah, I gotta I go with Mendoza on this. Uh ball check, like listen, I don't know if he if he have it all right now. Like win or lose. Like so yeah, Mendoza, um I say Mendoza by decision. Okay. It's, it's a ten round fight, right? Uh no, it's it's, it's gonna be a twelve rounder. Oh, a twelve rounder. I right. uh, oh yeah, because you said it's for a belt or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. interim belt. All right, Mendoza uh, and new <laughs> decision. Yeah, we get by the Mendoza decision. All right, there we go, Mendoza by decision. P, what about you? It's the same. It's the same thing. I think Mendoza's gonna grind it out, pause, and uh, should win pretty easily. Honestly, I don't think he's gonna have that much trouble. Because right, Bochek's not going to out tough him. Mendoza's a tough guy. And yes. Bo- Bochek has looked very shaky anyway. I could see a late KO, but I think it's a 9 3 type of uh, fight. So. Right. so, two decisions. Pilot, what about you? Yeah, similar to um, the, the fellow light skins on here. I think <laughs> I'm going to rock with Mendoza. He's a tough motherfucker. We see them more. I wouldn't be surprised if we're all wrong and pull a truck right to the occasion. He's been waiting for this for a while. You know, I mean, Brandon Adams knocked him out clean cold, but Brad Adams ain't fought since, unfortunately. But, you know, yeah, that's that bullshit. Oh, no, he, he chilling with the same dude who had uh, beat up uh, Ukateki, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And then Put them niggas there. in a room and just start a podcast Charles or something. Conwell I hate to see that. Go, yeah. Charles Conwell finally got the call from Golden Boy after hanging out with them niggas for a couple of years, so it's like, you know. 154 shit. But um yeah, I'm picking Mendoza. He's a tough motherfucker. His his career arc has been trending. Even in the, the Tim Zoo loss, I mean you gotta give him respect for not getting stopped because he got he was getting blasted on well. So I'm picking Mendoza, maybe a late stoppage or a decision. And I think I'm gonna complete the cipher, except I'm not going for the decision though. I think Mendoza knocks him out late. Like, but I do think it's going to be some back and forth shit. Like, they're going to throw some real hands at each other. But then I, have, I think Bohutchik's chin is going to let him down in the later rounds. And I think Mendoza is going to knock him out by, like, 10. You know, and like, like I said, Mendoza is, is really te- tough. You know, like I said, I mean, Omi Zhu is the one that's really kind of denting him like that. You know, but Zhu also has crazy power. But, and Bo- although Bohutchik can, can punch, like like P said, like he's his, his punch resistance is just a little bit too shaky for my liking. You know, so yeah, no, I'm I'm but I'm going for Mendoza actually knocking him out. So that will be, yeah, I think. We're we're all, yeah, we're all, and Mendoza is also the betting uh, underdog too. Currently at plus one sixty four, hmm. where Bahachuk is minus two hundred five. So, you know, hey, so hey, you know, for your degenerate gamblers out there, you know, what I'm saying if you want to put a little money on Mendoza, you know, you might want to look into that. What round you got him getting stopped there? Ten, I said. Ten. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, Mendoza's gonna knock him by that. ten. And, and like I said, you know, and and honestly, if that's not a war, I, I I'd be completely surprised because that's the fight I think they really want. Okay, we need to draw these motherfuckers in for the rest of this goddamn card. So we're we're we're, we're making sure that fight that sets it off. And then I, I can see that fight looking like Crowley Ramos. I, nigga, I hope. <laughs> hey, shit, like I, I really hope because. No, that yeah, was, you know, I'm just saying with the whole like one guy is gonna be kind of winning with the activity and another guy is gonna be hanging tough mm-hmm. but still getting his but you can tell he's losing so it's gonna have that dramatic last couple of rounds where you're like will we see a stoppage or will this guy hang on and you know what I mean Vasquez Marquez this shit and kind of be tough so it, it got it got decent decent yeah no, I, I mean I, it could I be I a decent good fight. Yeah, because that Crowley Ramos fight, I mean, it was a damage. I mean, Crowley had to go to eye surgery for winning that fight. And Ramos is just like, he hasn't been kind of heard of. <laughs> so, I mean, that was a that was a yeah. hard fight, you know what I'm saying? So, hey, if they if, they, if that opener can live up to it, yeah, I'm all for it. And then we got another free fight with someone who should be middleweight champion in the next two years or so. We have Elijah Garcia and Kyron Davis. Like I said, that's, a, again, great fight. Elijah Garcia... I mean, my only complaint about him is he takes so many fucking punches. Like, and he's young too. And I get it. He like, does, but it's like he knows defense. He has like a defensive awareness, but it's almost like a prime zoo in a sense where like he he comes off like he's more concerned about his offense, right? 
than his defense. Where that's why I never got the whole Golovkin comparisons because it's like you can tell Golovkin like he cares about both. Right. Where Zoo was always, always like, fuck it. If I land this one too, you know, hey. Right. But but yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah, and, and and my thing is like I know I mean he's young I, I get it but you know it's not he he's faced a couple of good punches that that could really especially in his last fight I mean he was getting cracked really good before he just before he kind of just outlasted the Resendez him. fight right was that the Resendez fight when yeah the Resendez Resendez? fight yeah that, that was a good fight, fight too it was damn near almost a fight of the year candidate but yeah it was just you know you you hate to see that though but you also see that dude is incredibly talented like dude can be in the mix right now as a middleweight champion. You know, and uh, like, like I said, all this and all this is just, you know, time. <laughs> you know, time to develop his defense. <laughs> and then we have Kyron Davis, whose best result was getting a draw with Anthony Durrell. And again, in one of those fights, you're like, why is Anthony Durrell getting a draw with this guy? <laughs> yeah, because it was a close competitive fight, but you do feel like Davis kind of should have took that. Mm hmm. But it wasn't like no crazy robbery or nothing. It, it more so speak on Darrell than anything. Yeah, it does. You know, and Darrell unfortunately has a lot of these has, has been getting a lot of these type of wins or losses or draws as of late in the last couple of years. And then of course they throw him in a couple of fights later against Benavides, who pretty much destroyed him. He got stopped <laughs> so, on his feet, though. If you remember, he got stopped on his feet. Even you know, uh, he, he, was he, got on his feet, but he, he was going to go down regardless. He was going to go down. Yeah. But. It was only. I mean, there's levels to it. It's not like he was getting like destroyed, destroyed. Like he was, he was, he was trying to hang there, with him. You know? he, was, yeah, he, was, he was tough. He was tough kid. He was, yeah, he was trying to hang with him, but he just couldn't. You know, Benavides was just, yeah. just too much. But like, the, like I said, this is a good. I want to say it's a crossroads fight, but you know, Kyle, he, I mean, he's on like a two, three fight win streak since then. So um, nah, it's pilot. not a crossroads. It's more like a. It might be an experience step up fight, with Garcia. But yeah, yeah, I don't like maybe a crossroads for Davis because it's like if he beats this kid, it's like he puts him back in the picture, right? But if, if if Garcia wins, it's like you got a new kid on the block where it's like okay, I'm fighting dudes that done been at it with Darrell Benavidez, da 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 da. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a good fight, you know, good fight. Yeah, no, it is. Like I said again, like because you know, because we, we, we've all support, we all are in support that Elijah Garcia should get as much exposure as he possibly can. Like I said, oh, that's yeah. that's a future middleweight champion, right? We there. need an American middleweight to do something. I mean, I mean, he's Mexican American, but we need fucking some middleweight out. You know, he speaks English, but we'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, middleweight it. needs middleweight needs a whole spark because middleweight division is pretty much a dead division right now. It, it does. Like nobody's trying to clean it up. It's just, I mean. Y'all niggas was hating on Golovkin all these years, and now that he gone, look at this fucking division we got now, nigga. Yeah, we have one unified champion and two inactive champions that have been active for two plus years. What kind of shit is that? And the unified champion is he got it from some random Germans who will never hear of again. That was nasty <laughs> shit. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so, just yeah. a bunch of random bouts at 160, where it's like, eh. You know, so but then like I said, so like I said, this is so what are we thinking in terms of uh, P? So what do you th what, what do you think for a prediction for Kyron Davis and Elijah Garcia? I think this is going to be a good learning experience for Elijah. Like, I think Elijah's going to win. But I think that um, Kyron is going to be crafty enough to, like, give him some different looks and kind of, at the very least, just survive. So Kyron's a survivor. So... Guys like that, I don't, I don't think Elijah's going to get him out of there. I think he's going to have some trouble in spots, but I think he'll win a, a, a decision. I think it'll be a clear decision for Elijah. So, like 116-112 type of fight. I think it's a, let me see, is it a 10-rounder? Because it's not, let's see. It, it or, is a, or, it's a 10-rounder, uh, yeah. Um, it's like 7-3-6-4 type of fight. There you go. All right, Pilot, what about you? Uh, ten rounders, shit. I'm I'm a, I'm being more wishful here. I, I think it'll be more along the lines of what P said. It'd be a tough, you know, gut check for for the kid for Elijah. Um, but I'm gonna just be optimistic and say he's gonna get him out in four rounds and continue his trajectory of fighting for a world title soon because it's more hope than anything. So I think he's gonna knock Kyron Davis out in four rounds. No disrespect. Shout out to Breadman and and Kyron Davis, you know, but. 
Yeah. Hey, that's right. Bread does train him, <laughs> doesn't he? Yeah, he does. He does. All right. Well, there you go. LB, what about you? Yeah, I'm kind of agreeing with uh, Pop. I mean, call this nigga Pop, but Pilot. Uh, I'm looking at Garcia getting a stoppage, but maybe not that early. I'm because you know, King P is right. Like uh, Davis is crafty. He's a survivor, but he also a fighter. I don't think he's gonna. What's his name? He ain't gonna Miguel Vasquez it. <laughs> he's gonna. He's gonna try to win. But uh, he'll have his moments. But I think Garcia gets him out in eight rounds. Okay. In a good little fight too. Like Davis ain't gonna just go in there. Like I think the plan for Davis may be the damn. Um, and you're right, Brandon. Uh, Brad does train him. It might be something similar to that guy he had uh, fight Brandon Lee that time. Mm-hmm. And like Brandon Lee was kind of overpowering him until like maybe the last three four rounds with a dude I forgot his name, but it was a fight not too long. It was about maybe a year or two ago. But uh, the dude started connecting and hanging with Brandon Lee toward the end. So it might be it, it could I can see a situation like that too where you're trying to letting Elijah Garcia get his shots off, his power off, let it kind of. You know, get him at 70% instead of 100 and then trying to go to work. But mm-hmm. a little harder in 10 rounds. You got to have, like, the power to really kind of beat dudes up at the end. Right. And the Hopkins, Jermaine Taylor approach ain't for everybody. <laughs> Facts. It ain't for Hopkins, to be honest. <laughs> like, I don't know who told this nigga, like, yeah, you got KO power at the end of fights, bro. Like... But, but yeah, uh, and shout out to Android with a dude. I read a tweet saying Triple G could come back now and win a belt at 160. It's true. <laughs> he's a little big, though. I can lie. Triple G, he's going to need a couple months to cut down back away. He's looking like he's. Yeah, like, I, like, in theory, he's right. But just when you apply it and really look at it, like, dude is like, I think his mind is just foregone out of the game, man. He couldn't make 160. He'd have to come back at 168, and that's a whole nother game. Man. Yeah. And what's the point? There's some monsters that super middleweight. There's some young, big motherfuckers that super middleweight. It, it, it don't even matter if you already had the payday and you took the damn champion to the brink. Right. <laughs> it's right. Like, we don't even care about glove kid fights at 168. Like, and I'm a fan, big fan, but his time is gone. Like, we want to see the Benavidez fade at 168 now. Canelo and all the figures and all and whoever else get get the pocket. Exactly. But yeah, Garcia by late KO, man. like eight rounds. But I can also see it going to this. Yeah, good fight. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, I do believe. I mean, I mean, I agree that Conor Davis will probably make it interesting. He, probably, he might even outbox Garcia, like maybe the first couple, two or three rounds or whatever. But I do. I mean, I I, I, I do think though Garcia will eventually wear him down. Um, by the mid rounds or whatever, and I think I mean I wouldn't be surprised if Garcia well, at least will score at least one knockdown because like Conor Davis is hard to get off his feet. I don't think I don't think he's gone down. At least I haven't seen any fights he's gone down. And like like I think this, this fight will look like how this fight could potentially look like how niggas thought uh, Zoo and Thurman would look. Right. You know what I'm saying, but I do think though. Garcia will get the stoppage. I think like around seventh round, like he'll he'll probably get hit with some crazy combination, and then you'll see Brad jump on the apron and like wave that shit off <laughs> immediately. Yeah. Like, so I mean, so yeah, like, and I think right now in terms of his odds, right now Garcia is a minus thirteen hundred favorite. <laughs> oh, damn. Yeah, and the Davis is a plus seven ninety underdog. So I mean. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they, it looks like the Vegas is like saying, like, um, yeah, <laughs> they, Garcia should, should win handily, though. But I do think it will it'll be, it'll be a competitive fight. Now, if Garcia gets rid of Dude probably in three rounds or less, then I'm like, oh, okay. And, you know, apparently we misgaged his, his abilities. <laughs> I mean, if it's like three rounds, and then, I mean, Pilot did say four, so he up on it. But yeah, I feel you. You know what I'm saying, but those are those are at least two. Those are good two good fights to set off. You know to sell to sell the pay per view and to convince the the the, 
the, um, the subs, the subscribers, the people who are trying to quality double header anywhere. Right. Like you had me hooked on that. Like if that was a part of that wasn't even a part of Prime and you just said these two fights are on tonight, like I would legit watch that shit. And you know that, and and I have a feeling too that the, the, those fights, those fighters, and those and those fights will be motivated because like, okay, we get a whole new platform. Like we gotta make sure, like they know they're gonna set the shit off, so they, you know, they're gonna probably put like two hundred percent effort into their fights. Like like both fights should not stink <laughs> at all. You know, and once we get to that, we you know we get to the main card, which you know, because a little moving around, particularly in the opener and the and the main event. Now the opener now is some, was something that was in the prelims, and truthfully I can see why they kind of moved it up because as much as we all like flyweight action, I, I'd say the masses don't necessarily you know the masses don't, don't you know they sleep on the flyweights like that so they're like thinking like okay you know we could probably bury this on the main card and we have like the other notable names on there give or take mm-hmm. on there but you have people that can actually throw hands. Such as the case of one Julio Cesar Martinez, who hopefully better get his shit straightened out. Like I don't want to hear no, you know that this month. Visa, visa, another another weight issues. <laughs> this nigga be having more visa issues than a cartel. Also, JCM's ball. under Canelo, right? So they're probably trying to make for, you know, give you know, be like, oh yeah, look at see Canelo looking out for you type of shit. You know, he's still in the he's still in Canelo's camp, really. For some reason, I mean, I, I don't know what this motherfucker is. Last minute, was, he was in match room before, and now he's fighting on PBC. Like, I'm just trying to figure out what the... Like, I don't know what this dude, like, dude be doing. Like, he and he still holds his belt. Like, he blows weight. He gets these injuries. He got that gift against that one dude, I felt like. Then, then he knocked somebody out, right? He got that one gift, I felt like. Yeah, I, I, like, I, like, one thing, too, is, like, who you see Martinez is a fan-friendly fighter. Like, bro, like, dude can punch. Like, dude, dude can do a brawl, but... He definitely should have a better career than what he has right now like yeah it's like i only know him for like two things like missing like 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 visa issues and yeah. they tried to feed chocolatito to him and it backfired <laughs> yeah <laughs> like he has to do something and so before i kind of like this style like he's aggressive it's hard like that but it's like somehow like it just like he's only known for them two things now like he need to do some other shit Right, you know, and, and, and this and this and that's the that's the crazy shit because he is facing somebody now as much for someone who can absolutely give him a hard fight in Angelina Cordova. Like you know, Venezuelan fighters, all they know how to do is punch. You know, we saw that with Barroso. You know, they may be slow, they may lack a little bit of skill, but you just can't get cracked by them clean. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like they will knock you the fuck out. <laughs> you know, and Cordova is like 18 0 and one with. 12 knockouts you know so like if you and if you see him he's on he's been on the the golden boy cards you know saying so like it could be like maybe right you know right time for Cardova to actually maybe score an upset over martinez who's like i said before dude has just been looking like it, you like like obviously you want to cheer for him but you know and it's always something with him like i like there should be odds right now like you know Will, will Martinez actually make it to the fight? <laughs> what would be the... Yeah, like, he, he's at that point right now. And, and the Arroyo fights was kind of like, damn. Like, mm-hmm. You, you want to see it, and it's like... <laughs> but yeah, like, you got him, like, well, I, I want to hear the predictions from y'all on this one. Like, what y'all got this one out? I mean, I, I'm, they're going to throw some hands. So, uh, for some reason, and I don't know why I keep on thinking, I think Cordova is... You know, Cordova may actually like stop him late. I don't know why I keep thinking that. I'm thinking the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I honestly think Cordova because Cordova will because Martinez, like I said, he's uh, like Martinez throws his hands like those no, 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 but he's not like the me. I mean, he doesn't really throw a consistent jab, or whatever. But he'll keep pressure on you, and I just think Cordova will just pick him off in between the shots over and over and over again. Um, yeah, until until Martinez kind of guy wears down, and then yeah, like, that that swarming style of his is gonna get he's gonna get cracked in this fight multiple yeah. times. Yeah, because like, like I was there for one of the Arroyo fights, and you know one of the knockdowns was because he came in, he was coming in crazy, and Arroyo cracked him one time, and down he went hurt. Yeah, he got cracked hard on that. One. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, and and I and I, and, and that's why I think it's going. And that's why I, I just think Cordova is just going. It, it's you know, it's basically like it's going to wear him down late. He's got to probably stop him by like maybe eleven or so. So that's that's basically my prediction. I think Cordova might score the upset with the upset KO. P, you think you're thinking the same thing? Yes, I am. Mm-hmm. What round? Yes, P, what round? Me. Yeah. Uh, it's it's going to be late. It's going to be one of those late rounds. Um, <laughs> I'll probably say I'll say ninth round. Ninth round. That's okay. I, I can see that ninth round. You know, like yeah, I can see that. Pilot, what about you? Um, I hate to say it, but I'm rolling with JCM, Julio Cesar Martinez. Mm-hmm. I think um. I say his luck will continue, but he's been kind of scraping by. Like that guy Carmona, I feel like that guy Carmona should have beat him. Um, you know, in the fight after that, what's his name? Uh, fucking Batista was boxing him up, and then you know JCM got his little equalizer knockout. And, yeah, he did. <laughs> you know, I spent the more against the Chocolito Tito fight, but you know that's the all time greatest fight. But I think he'll rise to the occasion and. Uh, and get it, you know. I think he'll win the decision, but he'll, he'll hurt him a couple times. But I think I'm picking JCM in a comfortable decision victory. Comfortable decision. And hey, you really do have you do you do have confidence in Martinez. <laughs> That's some real confidence. A now, he got confidence in the judges. That's what I hear. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that too. That too. He's like, you know what? Like, like we're not gonna just cash out Martinez yet. Not like, yet. And I, I, I think we're gonna drop him. You know, I think he'll drop him or something. You know, like, he'll hurt him. Or, you know, there'll be a moment where like, okay, then. then. I mean, pilots on to something. Like I can see a, a, a fuckery afoot in this type of fight. This, like, if, if uh, Cardova or what's his name? That, what, am I saying it right? Cardova, yeah. Cardova. If he don't, if he don't really stand on business and really put his foot in his ass, like, yeah, I don't know if they'll give him the decision, man. It's like you don't want to get wild with Martinez and, and focus on trying to stop him. Like, let it, wow. let it come to you. But um, yeah. Uh, but still, I, I ain't I ain't rocking with Martinez though. Pilot by himself on this one. Bro. <laughs> I say Cordova by decision. Yeah, yeah. I just think he's just gonna pick him apart, and um, he'll have enough power and and leverage to really just make Martinez respect him. Like Martinez to be on him, he'll be like in his face and all that shit. You know, because he did the same thing with uh, Chocolatito, and I think he won maybe like what three rounds against dude. Not the most, <laughs> three at the, the most. most. Like yeah. that shit was more Trout Cotto than anything. So, right. And but he, but he took he took Chocolito punches pretty well though. Like I don't remember him getting like hurt. Maybe buzzed a few times, and Chocolatito could hit even at his you know later stage. So he he might could just you know. Whether whether it is go to distance, but I don't know if I think his luck might run out this time. Like, unless he really equalized that nigga, like yeah, because because uh, one thing is even for the, as uh, as in freaking that he's been fighting lately. I mean, he still he still is a flyweight champion. He's held that belt for a minute, you know. But yeah, like I mean, I do think it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said, I do think his time is starting to run out because simply he's just he's not active enough. And of course, he's in Canelo's camp with you know obviously Canelo's camp, you know. They've, they've yeah, been, he, had, he had a bunch of scary niggas and and, and runners over there, and, and just fuckery. Was so <laughs> like, could you imagine if, if if Ryan Garcia was still over there with this Haney fight? Like, oh my goodness! Like, who I mean, he, 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 he'd be better offensively, sure, but then he'd probably get picked apart. Even faster. I don't even know if he'd be better off offensively. Like I didn't see no like he'd still be the same dude getting spun around from left hooks from Jason Velez. Like Yeah. <laughs> like nah. Like or he, or he had dropped hard by Luke Campbell, you know. Yeah, that shit wasn't gonna work no more for him. Like his luck ran out with them all Canelo niggas. Like mm-hmm. like nah. <laughs> nah, I would even nah. Hey, I know Derek James ain't the best, but god damn. And that's better than the fucking uh, Reynoso right now. That that might. Be I don't true. know. Me personally, I don't know if I would want to train in the gym, and the nigga who's the head of the gym 
is also ducking a fight. <laughs> like that shit ain't good. Like, bro, like honestly, could you see yourself going to a gym every day? And the nigga you look up to, the dude who's like, and we've all been to boxing gyms. We know who's the ace or the star of the gym. And you know what I mean? And imagine him being a guy that's afraid of smoke from somebody. And not just on some like, like, uh, like he's avoiding it or uh, he's, he's too big for me. He's too big. <laughs> it's literally, he's literally saying like, nah, I need, I need a hundred million dollars for this. I need that. Dude, million. This, this, this excuse after excuse. So yeah, like I don't think Ryan Garcia would have, like I don't think he needed to be in that type of environment. Like as, no. as much fuckery he brings himself. Like I, I personally wouldn't want to be going to no gym. Where I know the best nigga in the gym is ducking a motherfucker. <laughs> Who earned it? Who earned it? Not just a nigga calling you out. It's one thing if a nigga just calling you out and just talking shit about you. Like every time you go, the streets is like, yeah, man, yo, just fight this nigga. Yeah, this nigga running guy. But if I say you ring game niggas pussy, like y'all niggas soft. Yeah, yeah, you training niggas, you ain't fight. Now that's one thing, and you know the nigga just running his mouth. He ain't earning. But a nigga earned it and you making ex- nah like fuck that shit. Nigga. I can't be a nigga like that nigga. <laughs> you'll start you'll start doing certain shit that that nigga doing. Right. So nah. But yeah, that's that's it all that. But yeah, no, like I said, I mean that like I mean that open like I said, because you know the fight I mean in the in the last last year, you know, they had Puma Martinez set off that shit lovely with his fights, and you know, his fights were just damn near just violent affairs for no reason, like other than he's just like you know, he, he, he unless he just felt like he had to go war that day or whatever. So I mean, it can just continue the condition of getting the lighter weights to shut it off because we're especially in here for the next fight, who which we don't even know what to even expect anymore. We have one middleweight champion who's gonna make his first title defense in two fucking years as a full middleweight champion, Arislandi Laura. Oh, Hold on, the fact that they put Laura and Thurman, two of the most inactive niggas on one card, you knew one of you should have known one of them wasn't going to happen. Right. Like, I, I really don't know what PBC was thinking of this, and I fuck with PBC, but, but funny like, they was really on oh, some ifs and maybes on this one. I mean, with Laura, at least he doesn't have a history of getting injured. That, at least that to his credit. True, but I mean, are we really like... I'm making a card to just promote boxing on a new platform. I'm just saying, like, I don't know. These niggas really, like, they went into the well of fuckery. Like, you got Julio, you got Marti- Cesar Martinez, Laura, and Thurman all on the same card. Like, like were y'all just trying to get this shit canceled? Well, I mean, they are, I mean, well, not Laura. It's just say, yeah, I don't have to say exciting. What are you saying, nigga? That's three names. That's that's like three of the most unpredictable type of names. To, 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 to. No, no, go, no. I'm just saying. Uh, like, that's I, all think, saying. You know, I think they're banking on Zoo, you know, the money in Australia. I'm not sure how, to, how it's going to work out, but I think, you know, they're, they're going to, you know, the, the Australians are going to pay for it so it don't we'll break even or what, whatever, you know, money wise. You know. Yeah, that, that could be. Yeah, that but, the fact, but the thing is, though, Laura, though, I mean, obviously, you know, all 49 year olds, uh, 40, 49, 51, you know, we're, we're putting out ages out there because, you know, Cubans, you know, their true ages are almost never known. You certainly can't go by their their um, their um listed ones because that would mean Laura is younger than me, and that's not yeah, really go cool. Go uh, uh, add an extra three years to whatever their listed age is. Yeah, yeah exactly. Laura definitely ain't younger than me, you're like. <laughs> I damn. Yeah, I mean, if, I'm just—it's fast if, though. If Frank Sanchez is 30, then I'm 25. Right? Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Like. Oh shit, damn. But if Luis Ortiz is whatever he is, then I'm guess I'm 10 years younger than what I am. <laughs> that nigga legit look like he's some 55 year old stepfather or some shit. Like, the, like he up there. Like, like that nigga come home. Punch a wall, drink a beer, sit down, watch TV type shit. Like, right? Like that's that real age. Like, damn. <laughs> yeah, I know. But with Laura, though, it's like you know, you like Laura. Pretty much, I mean, obviously, like, if it, I mean, you know, once upon a time ago, you know, Laura was a, a problem. He was a problem. You know, you know, 
although of course like i said there are some fights you just like you know his style of, of his his constant movement and one two you know got him far got him far in the pro game though but after that herd fight you know you, you could tell that shit was not the same anymore for for him like because that fight took a lot out of him <laughs> and, and then he fight right after Yes. Yeah, and, and honestly, that was that, honestly, and that was he, that was the props that he actually took the Kasanga fight. But then that fight was a little bit too hard for him. And then after that, his competition should have lost was, that motherfucker. He should have, but he got to draw another one, like the third draw on his record. You know, and then after that, it was facing Canelo, struggle brother, and Vendetti, and Cornflake, Lamana, and Gary, and you know Gary O'Sullivan is just like, and then in two of those fights were actually were middleweight title fights. Before he got upgraded, because Triple G retired, so that is why we have there's like a, a, who's a whole middleweight champion in 2024. Excuse me, in the year of our Lord 2024. You know, facing someone who, uh, facing someone who Peter Quillen knocked out cold on a PBC card years ago in Michael Zarafa. Now, I'm rooting for Zarafa to actually beat Laura because. Laura might actually go ahead and fight Danny Garcia next after this, and I don't want to see that either. I don't want to see it at all. So Rafa, for at least to his part, you know, I mean, his competition is not that much better. I mean, he knocked out Jeff Horn in one in he split two fights with, with Jeff Horn, and he knocked out Anthony Mundine in one round. <laughs> you know, so that you know that's a plus, I guess. Oh wow, the the, the bar is set low for this one. Yeah, <laughs> right. <Jeez. laughs> so, you know, so it's pretty much, I mean, so, I mean, but he's still young. I think he's like 33 or whatever. So, I mean, time is on his side. So, honestly, you don't even know what to expect. I mean, we can either get a surprising brawl where Zarafa gets the win or Laura decides he wants to get somebody out of there with one left hand or we get a whole boar fest, which Laura runs around the ring for about seven rounds and then fights very ugly because he's kind of, you know, physiology is kind of lost. You know, doing him being like fifty three or some shit. So it's um. So yeah, what are we th- what are we thinking for prediction, LB? What do you what do you think? And what do you first? What do you hope? What do you think? Uh, I hope we get a good fight, but like this is Laura we're talking about. Where <laughs> we haven't got a good fight from him since Castano fight. So um, and right. that was in what twenty nineteen. Twenty nineteen, yeah. See, 2019 just was amazing. Anytime I think about it, Jesus, that was a, like, if you didn't get into boxing that year, you kind of failed. Yeah. But um, lower about the decision, um, you know, and it's it's the fight. It's gonna be the 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 roll up corner store, order your pizza wings. It's gonna be that type of fight, like <clears throat> unless the uh, uh, he knocks dude out early, just he one twos him real quick, but. Then that's the thing is like like Laura like he went the distance with fucking Freddie Hernandez. <laughs> like genies, like but but you'll knock out a Ronald Hurts. Yeah, it, it's weird. Like his, it's just like, weird, nigga. Like and remember Berto? That Berto made the easiest nine hundred k I've ever seen in my life with in his fight with uh, Fernandez. I mean Freddie Hernandez. I mean, you have to understand how long Laura's been fighting. I mean, Laura. I mean, Laura has fought the Punisher. Like he's part of the last active fighters actually fought the Punisher right now. Like you know, yeah. in a fight that he probably should have, he should have won. There's no question yeah. about that one. You know, should have won by KO if he damn stopped fucking around. I mean, he wasn't like that nigga. Like I mean, that nigga. That's probably his best offensive performance I've ever seen. Like, it was, but the fact that he couldn't put Paul Williams away. And he was having his moments where he would let Paul Williams come back and throw hands. You would not he, look somebody of Laura's caliber was not supposed to let Williams even win four rounds in their fight. I mean, Punisher still it wasn't a. It's still Punisher is harder. good, but remember, is not this wasn't the Punisher that turned it around. This wasn't the Punisher that fought a Sheeta, and it was like, okay, look like this nigga kind of came back now. Look like he's kind of back to normal. Where it's to the point where, like, you know what? I can see him fighting Canelo. Give him a little see, so see if Canelo can handle him. No, this was the Paul Williams that was still trying to figure shit out. Like, yeah. his punch resistance was horrible in that fight. That's what I'm saying. Like, 
he was getting hurt by Laura. Like, God damn, Laura just stepped the foot on the gas and knocked this motherfucker out. No, you did one, two, the man to death. You ain't got no creativity in your offense. You didn't step to him when you should and you not, and knock him out. No, you're fucking throwing your one twos, letting Paul Williams keep getting into the fight. Like, bro, like, and that, that, to me, that was just the Melina payback, really. For, for, yeah, for, it, it was. Like I yeah. said, like, if there was supposed to be Boxing a karma. Yeah, he was supposed to have a loss on his record. You know, Laura, if it wasn't going to be for the Punisher, it was going to be for the Molina. He was Richie got drawn. And then you got Andrew, the Laura always been a puncher. It's just he he a boxer first. He, right. But Laura believes in his boxing more than he believes in his punching. Because if he believed in his punching, he would have clearly beat Canelo and not fucking get on his bicycle after getting a couple body shots. Right. <laughs> at, at least Thurman could still fight when he get them body shots. Laura really turns into a different dude. And the funny thing is too is Laura because Laura is like, like yeah like, like he goes to this with Fernandez but then he stops Alfredo Angulo like and fucks his whole shit up like in a fight. Well, he had and, to, uh, Alfredo Angulo was right there with him and, yeah. and knocking him around the ring and shit like some yeah, niggas ain't gonna stop nobody unless you force him unless you say like look like, you don't stop this dude he gonna stop you then it's like okay knock yeah yeah he's right you punch knock him out or, or break his uh, face. Yeah, and you got a lot of fire in motherfuckers like that. He he's the worst type of niggas that you would want to train, really. Right. Yeah, because it's like, and, and then, of course the trout horns. He he literally washed trout. Like trout was never beaten as badly as he was by Laura. You know, that's another thing. Because because Laura could do everything better than trout. Like yeah. like there's not the only thing trout does better than Laura is activity and offensive variety. But unless you're kind of quicker or hit harder or box better, that's not gonna really come into play against a guy like Laura who just does everything better because he's a little stronger, he's faster, he hits harder, better yeah, defense. Like, I mean, like Yeah, Laura has a legit one hitter quitter. His left hand is a legit one hit quitter. Like and so it's like and and like I just say, he's sitting down now because yeah, his age. Because I, I don't think he, I don't think he can take too much like punishment or the run. Or- he's always sat down. It depends on the opponent. When somebody can hurt him and, and put the fear of life, fear of death in him, he'll sit down. If it's one with those, where if it's a Canelo situation, where like okay, I got to box a little bit, then he ain't sitting down. Like right. he picking tools. Like he was sitting it down against Heard, Castaño, any nigga who could hurt him. Right, <laughs> but yeah, it, anything got nothing to do with it. It's his temperament. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like fuck this fight. Like y- y'all got this nigga winning, so we can talk about something better. Yeah, no, I got Zarafa because I'm I'm hoping for I'm I'm praying for Zarafa KO. I'm uh, Zarafa KO, and I don't mind that either. In, in ten, like P, what do you what do you think about what do you have for Zarafa and uh, Laura? Uh, Laura's not losing to the stripper. He's knocking him out. Like it's gonna be like a cornflake type fight. Fucking Laura in six. Pilot. Yeah, same. Laura's gonna ice the stripper out. Um, you know, <laughs> Laura's become you know a stationary counter puncher. You know, he's Cuban. He got the skill, but when he moves to one sixty, he's less getting older. He's bec- lately he's knocking out. You know, you know corn cornflake and uh. You know the nigga with, with the planter's mustache, Spike O'Sullivan. So. <laughs> Gary O'Sullivan, Spike yeah, Gary O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan yeah. So, I think it'll continue. This guy, this is Rafa's. You know, been waiting for a minute, but it's a wrap for him. He'll get knocked out in seven. And what do we have for odds on Fanduel? Well, Rafa's obviously the underdog at plus two seventy. Laura is the is a minus three seventy uh, favorite, and then we, this one has methods of victories already out. For a lower decision, it's plus 105. So, you you know, there's something there. For a lower KO, it's plus 220. The draw is plus 1600. And also, I, I put something on the draw, too, because Laura has uh, too many histories of, of these these weird draws that he would yeah. get. And then, and then Andrew, in the comments, I did see Angel Garcia in an interview saying Daddy might be back, but it, it might not be on PBC. And that's what Angel said. So, that's kind of, I mean, just looking at your comment, I just wanted to mention that. Yeah, no, I saw that too. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't want to fight Laura either. Like, what does that do for Danny's career? It gets him a one sixty belt, makes him a three division, right? But I don't know. Yeah, yeah this is fucking Laura, though, bro. Like, you could, your fight could be ugly. It's not a style, good style matchup for either one, really. Like, 
Yeah. And, and no one seems to want to see it. Like, yeah, it, it was Zarafa for the points is plus five fifty, and Zarafa the KOM is plus six fifty. So, like I said, there's there might be and something we even think that could happen. Yeah, and, and like I said, and like even this even I mean, wow, for some for some reason this fight has like all the bets like. Laura to win between one and six is plus seven fifty. So there's something there, which is possible. It is very possible. Or yeah, it's just better off just trying to guess the fuckery outcome in the Laura fight. I wouldn't even add Laura to no parlay on this one. Like this yeah, is Laura, a strictly shits and giggles solo bet. Yeah, I mean, I mean, shit too. I mean, or if you bet Laura to win in the first two rounds, it's plus. 3500 so like like i said though that, like laura has a one hit to quitter like you said so you know those those props may actually be attractive if you actually want to you know to dabble on that you know but yeah uh, that fight you know we just hope we just hope that fight that's a piss break fight smoke break fuck break whatever break that you think <laughs> of <laughs> that's what that shit is and nigga break it into your house to, to watch the pay per view. You beat his ass, break like you know. Yeah, exactly. Some LL shit. Exactly. So the next fight is the fight I hate the most. I just hate it off GP. I'm not even gonna. I'm, I'm not even gonna hold you. You know, because we we got one Rolando Roly Romero making this first title defense of the 140 belt, which he shouldn't have. You know, against Isak Pitbull Cruz, who's coming up from 135. Like I said before, like I like I, I'm not gonna hold. We have one fighter who's who, who pretty much ducked his Mando and let his Mando go into a situation where his Mando got brutally KO'd by the fighter that Roly should have lost in to. one round by the old 55 year old. No, no, all that proved was the Mando didn't deserve to be bad though. And I oh, think yeah. Roly was right about saying that dude that Bro also had true power because he knocked out. I know it's British chin, but he didn't knock out a, a top. Contender, at, you know, in one round. Yeah, because everybody was picking dude to beat Roly if they fought, and it made the impression that Roly was ducking dude. It didn't. You lose to the same guy in one fucking round. Well, well, like Roly did seconds. duck. Roly did duck Davies. That's not. That's, we have to make that very clear. He absolutely he did, but now hindsight is like these niggas is like well, all these yo the fucking all three of these niggas is trash. <laughs> it's just, the old nigga is 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 the highest quality of trash. Like he's, he's at the top nigga. of the trash mouth. Right. Like because Davies, Davies, all he did was he he proved he proved Roly right. Yeah, yeah Roly. Really it's like two ducks don't make a goose, nigga. Like <laughs> <laughs> even though Roly fixed it, don't make no wrong. Don't make, didn't make a right either. Like I mean, really clearly, you know, Stevie Wonder could tell you fake that injury, but it's what it is. Of course he did. Yeah, he, yeah did. he did, but then it's like they see, and that's and that's the thing. Like Davies talked all that shit, all that getting shit. into it, it with shit. Leonard Ellerby, who has nothing to do with the dude's situation. First of all, talking so much shit, uh, talking Davies. so much shit, and you have that type of performance. It's one thing if you damn you you go some rounds or you lose a decision or you give us a fight of the year, whatever, but. What that happened? was the worst outcome to have for yourself for the type of shit you was talking in the circumstances. Like, yeah, it, like it, literally, it, it, like it, it, I didn't want to hear from this nigga no more. Yeah, and it was rather unfortunate too because now with Barroso, Barroso will absolutely, you know, take a step aside because you know Barroso's in the winding down of his career, so Barroso's definitely going to take a six figure, uh, you know, step aside. You know, whereas Davies was not going to. So this is why we're getting the fight with Cruz. In Cruz, obviously, ever since that fight with Tank, you know, you know, everyone knows. Obviously, he made it very close for Tank, and he won a close decision. He lost a close decision, but Cruz hasn't done anything after that. Well, his last fight was like the first real opponent, right? And that was like, God damn! After like two, three years of just fucking off, like, and yeah. then he didn't look good in his. In, in in the fight where he finally fought a a, a, a a decent fighter, yeah, a decent fighter. So that's another thing. I'm just like, bro, like you can't. That's like you telling somebody like, yo, go to the store and pick up something, like pick up this, mm -hmm. and it's like they just procrastinate and then they finally go to the store and they come home and find they should you ask some niggas to get. You're like, I mean, truthfully, I thought I mean I thought Cabrera actually won that damn fight anyway, so. It was, it was, it was, I can see that it was one of like neither guy looked good. I just felt Cruz, his punches were a little more impactful. 
So I could see him winning, but neither guy. Like, and the fight was there. Like, their styles missed where if both guys would have just did better or, or went harder, like, it would have been a whole different outcome. But it just seemed like niggas are just, like, they both mailed it in. Well, the fun thing is, too, is like Cruz, like, Cabrera had a chance because Cruz can, didn't hurt him for shit. Like, could nah, not he hurt didn't. him. Yeah. Seemed like he just landed bigger shots, though. Yeah, he did. You know, Cabrera. Like he just kind of stood there, took him since then. He was like, all right, my turn. Bye, bye, bye. Yeah. So now again, let's fight at 140. And I mean, I'll, I'll be the first to say, like, I mean, that, like, Roley is, I, I, I don't think he's trash to me. And Cruz can actually fight. He just doesn't fight right. So, and honestly, if Cruz doesn't knock Roley out, I'd be completely surprised. Like, yeah. Like, I mean, I, I honestly think that like, Cruz will probably knock dude out by like seven or something like that. Do you think Cruz the puncher like that at 140 now? Or is just Roley just that trash to you? Roley's trash to me, bro. I'm sorry. Like, I... Not even with the style matchup. You're just going, <laughs> everything you're saying is basically off of Roley just being trash. Nothing else. Roley, uh, Roley in his best, like, he, you know, Roley is. And, and I'm not arguing against you about Roley being trash. Like, nigga, that's something. I think we all could agree on. I'm just saying for this particular fight. I mean, I mean, uh, uh, here's what I think. I mean, because I, I know Cruz is going to be super aggressive. He's going to throw combinations. He's going to light dude up with combinations. Roley is neither defensive nor is he someone that you can see that you, you, see, you see him actually countering or doing anything. Now, Roley can actually back foot box a little bit because we saw that in the Barossa fight because he was getting touched too much and he didn't like the power coming back at him. But honestly, I, I just think that Cruz is just going to swarm him and put hands on him until until he says no mas. <laughs> like, seriously. But like, oh, 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 sorry. I hope he does that because he didn't do that in his last fight. He had the same <laughs> type of tall opponent. Facts. But yeah, I, I, honestly, I, honestly, if Cruz doesn't win this fight, I, I'd, I'd be completely surprised. But I think he's got he's to stop rolling by like seven. So that's my prediction. What about you, uh, LB? Wow, this is crazy. Um, I feel like Roley by decision. Roley by decision? How so? It's just... I think he'll just, like... I think the fight where... If, if Cruz gets into this cover-up mode... And he has to get into an exchange where he has to open up the attack Roley. It gives Roley an opportunity to clip him or wrestle him and make it dirty where he could sneak in one of those elbow haymaker punch weird <laughs> angle type shits. So if, if so I just see that's how the fight naturally progressing. If Cruz had a better performance last time, I'd be more sold on him like beating the shit out of Roly, but he looks bad against Cabrera. Yeah, like Cruz, I feel like he almost he damn near spoiled on the vine at this point. Mm-hmm. Like he just looked like he was just in there for a check. Like I I don't know. Like Roly looked bad too against Barroso, but God damn, like God, this fight is just horrible to call, but at least he's at his natural he's more out of natural weight class. Mm-hmm. Whereas I think uh, Cruz, one of those dudes, if he trained hard enough, like, he, he could, like, I don't see him as Cruz, as a guy that should have moved up to 140 uh, right away or, or right now. Like, agree. He didn't look, like, he don't look like a dude big enough. Like, like he could have stayed at 135. Like, like he's Jojo Diaz in, he's Jojo Diaz in himself. So, but you still, so, but, yeah. you still but you're still sticking with the rolling decision. Yeah, because I feel like it's obvious that they kind of like the powers that be kind of see more in Roley as a marketable name, future opponent for people, more so than Cruz. And it kind of tells because it's like Roley's matchmaking been a little more strategic or at least more like we're trying to get you into contention or, you know, noticeable fights. Whereas Cruz just been spoiling on the vine then they said oh yeah yeah fight this guy he's he's pretty good and then he looked like shit and it's like all right fuck it feed him the roly like you know both of these guys are tank leftovers let's see what let's see what's the tastiest leftover like 
We got <laughs> cheesecake factory leftovers with them Grand Lux Cafe. No, no, they from the same company. You got <laughs> cheesecake factory and some damn Lagrange leftovers. La Lagrange La house. <laughs> leftovers, uh, uh, oil tropical. Uh, uh, you, you just got leftovers versus leftovers, nigga. Because one leftover is maybe a little fresher, or the restaurant is a little more upscale. Like, that's it. I rest my case, Your Honor. <laughs> All right, uh, P. What about you? Pitbull uh, ninth round KO. I think he's gonna stop him in the ninth. It's gonna be an ugly fight, honestly. Uh, I can also see that too, and I wouldn't be surprised if Roley's uh, if Roley's on the verge of getting disqualified. That's gonna happen one of these days. It's gonna be a, a DQ. Uh, he's gonna take a DQ loss, and that like Pitbull style is just gonna be very rough. It's gonna be he's gonna be throwing him around. Like, he might be throwing him around a bit. He might yeah, but I think um, Pitbull will just swarm him. And chip away at him, and I think he'll get him out of there in the ninth. Rolly's not all that durable, not anymore, at least. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, damn, y'all surprised me with all these KOs. Like, yo, pilot, what you smoking? I mean, what you going? <laughs> um, I'm picking. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't know if P is done or not. I don't know. No, I'm, I'm sorry, P. That's that's right. That's, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm. I'm being, being optimistic again here. I'm rolling with Shutter's pick of rolling with the decision. Um, uh, you know, I know this fight is going to be an ice for more, more than likely, but I can see the fuckery. So, I, and it's intriguing because Rolly's a big motherfucker that looks like he could end up being a welterweight, and Cruz looks like a small dude that could be at one. You know, he's a tank, but you know, it's like he's you know a short motherfucker. He could be at one thirty, really. I mean, you know, he's you know he's small lightweight, so it's like it's intriguing because you know Romero. Did leave Bullet, who I don't think was coaching shit. Shout out to Dennis Rodman, Steve Curry. You know, Bullet. Don't think he was. I didn't see any progress. I didn't see any improvement with with Roley at all. You know, he looked decent against a tank fight, whatever. But the Barroso fight was. That's like, literally the best we've seen him look ever. Him look, you know, <laughs> and that's what halfway tank was carrying him. But he he did do. You know, he looked competent. You know, either way. So, I think him going back with his original coach Ismael Salas, who you know has a hitter. You know, more of a hit than a miss for his fighters. I think this will be. I think he's going to show us. I think this will be his best performance. I think he's going to show. His, you know, he's got the length on him. Paul's. He's got. You know, he's. You know, he's taller and longer, and I think he'll be able to use the jab and back foot box. And you know, when his first fights got first announced, I thought, okay, easily it's going to be people and some crazy haymaker, which could very well happen. Some late crazy fucking overhand or haymaker that will that's going to you know rock Rolly's world. But um, I think Rolly will withstand the storm and get a. Uh, eight four type legitimate decision because the Cabrera fight against some people thought Cabrera beat Pitbull. I could see it. Um, you know, Pitbull's kind of misplaced on the Vince won that tank rematch. But if he wins this fight I, again, I think Tank's gonna win the you know fight the winner for a belt. Um, but, you know, as long as he beats Frank Martin, so it's intriguing. It's an intriguing match, and I think R R Roly is gonna win and shock the world. Man, <laughs> better fight three times in a year if. if if, if your fights are gonna be Frank Martin and, and Roly Cruz winner, yeah, nah, you know, uh, like, that's not, not like, <laughs> that's that's ah, like that's not good for like a two fight a year. It's, that's great for three fights a year. Don't get me wrong. Like if you can sneak that in, yeah. But those being your two fights, uh, that's like I, I don't know. It's like a. It's like a date that started off good, but then ended off shitty or something. Like, What's the odds on the, the unruly pit? Is, I think Pitbull's probably with the, the two to third favorite or something. Right now, the money line is has um, Roly as the underdog plus two fifteen underdog. Cruz is minus oh, two eighty. Oh wow! Now for method of victory though, <laughs> Roly decision points is four plus four sixty. Roly KO is plus five hundred. Draws sixteen hundred. Uh, Cruises for points decision is plus three thirty, and Cruz KO is minus one hundred five. So there might be. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. This card ain't built for no fucking parlays. Y'all crazy if y'all do a <laughs> <laughs> extended. If y'all do a parlay for more than two fights off this whole card, you crazy. <laughs> oh, salute, Rob D. What's good? What's happening, RGR? Salute, Bev. What it do? Damn, I don't. I feel like I didn't see Beth name in here in a good minute, so I hope all is well, though. 
Salute, bro. Yeah, no, I mean, that's like because, like I said, it might be one of those things. It's like, obviously, I mean, I mean, I want to, I, I, I want to, I mean, a cruise KOs, I'm betting on too, but there is value on the on the on the cruise decision. That's for damn sure. If you're betting now, of course, I'm pretty sure as you know, as the fight as the fight you know gets here, it'll probably go down. But uh, I don't know if they gonna give Cruz the decision. Like he's gonna really have to beat the shit out of Roly to get a Cruz decision. Like. I mean, shit. Barroso's Barroso was getting was winning comfortably at two of the cards. Like he was. That fight was getting good too, and fucking Tony Weeks fucking stopped it. It was actually heating up. It pissed me off. Yeah, that's what the judges was like. Yeah. Wait, hold on. We can't give this trash nigga in the fight, yo. Yeah, yeah. See, and, and and that's my point exactly. Like Barroso was up on two of them cards, but what was the result? Well, no, Barroso was up on all the cards, but two of them all the all the cards. It don't matter, but the result was the fuck. Like that's why the fuckery happened. Yeah. Like and, and I feel like Cruz, he better go for it, man. He can't do this lackadaisical shit he was doing in his last fight. Cause, like he, like I don't see Cruz as a guy who be landed overhand rights like that. Like, right. and Roly best punch in this fight would be an uppercut. But Cruz knows how to defend against the uppercut because he fought a nigga who best punches the uppercut. Right. So this fight could look ugly. If I'm if I'm Cruz, I'm just trying to stick to Roly and just work his body, and maybe get an overhead shot. Um, if I'm Roly, I'm literally just trying to just jab this guy, and uh, if he gets close, I'm gonna tie him up, wrap him up, and try to get hooks and throw my Sean Porter type punches on the inside. <laughs> like somebody has to outwork the other, but it's how you do it, and I think that's gonna be the interesting part in this fight like it could be low output or it could be rough mid output i mean would y'all and, i mean yeah. would y'all really be shocked if, if romero was to outbox i mean you know clearly win a decision i wouldn't i'm just saying i wouldn't i, I wouldn't i honestly wouldn't like i'm surprised I, honestly this is more of a 50 50 fight than than um a favorite really like i think just a lot of niggas don't like roly and for good reason yeah, <laughs> but um, oh, oh, that's what's up, Beth. I'm doing good. Just found out my cuz boxes. Oh, salute to him then. Salute mm-hmm. all to her. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But yeah, salute to them. But yeah, yeah, I can see like yeah, this fight. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is one of those fights like the Laura fight. If you doing your bets, do not put this on the parlay. Make a separate fuckery bet for this shit because <laughs> you might be. You might have everything hit that day and then Roly Cruz double knockout, uh, disqualification, body slam out the ring, turnbuckle, <laughs> headbutt, whatever the fuck the case is, because these niggas will do it. So that's all I got to say on that. But yeah, Roly, so it's, yeah, it's even, it's two, of, it, it's, 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 it's me, and, me and Pilot against y'all two. Okay, all right, we'll see what happens. <laughs> and now we got to the, the new main event. Where Tim Zhu now will not only defend his WBO belt, but also has a chance to win a vacant WBC belt. And he'll be facing none other than Thurman's replacement, Sebastian Fundora. You know, it where. Could be fun. Oh, yeah, no, that. And I think that's part of the reason why it's like, you know, Bahachik could have probably been a better choice, but Fundora brings a fun factor because Fundora, for some odd reason, his six seven self can make a hundred fifty four pound weight limit, which is insane, you know. And you have a couple that you have someone who doesn't like to use his physical advantages, you know, doesn't like to use his reach or any of that shit. Likes to go inside and war with people because he can't, bro. Like y'all gotta stop thinking every tall nigga. Well, didn't PC is predisposed to using his reach? Like, but didn't PC dude, say- eyesight is horrible. But I think I think King P mentioned that he has like I think he's near nearsighted or whatever. Like his eyesight's really fucked up. So yeah, he's like, damn near blind. So he can't like, yeah, like he's not gonna be prodded with a jab and shit. Dude, if he do it, dude, like, bro, bro, like, this is this is this is why, like, not everybody could be boxing trainers, coaches, and teachers, because y'all would literally get niggas knocked the fuck out trying to have a fight to your standard or how they should fight. Like, Fondora, like, he's not like Paul Williams in the sense where he could get on the back foot. He has enough reaction speed, timing. To them and distance where he could box extended periods 
Like he's not that type of guy. Like dude's nearsighted. Dude, dude can't box for longer than thirty seconds. <laughs> Facts. Like, like if I'm from Dora, I'm really just showing having dude. Like, look, <clears throat> you want to be able to throw punishing jabs to get to break the distance and make them think that they got to come to you. But in but in reality, you come into them with a more forceful jab that makes you create contact and then you rip them up on the inside with the double hooks and just really just tighten the defense Fondora tighten defense he's a better guy but sometimes he leaves his hands in spots where it causes open it creates openings mm -hmm. and that's where I got like uh Mendoza was able to crack him so if anything Fondora need to be damn lifting the weights get on some strength you know what I mean like like punch harder like be physically stronger like he he wins fights off activity and leverage. And I don't know if that's gonna be enough for a guy like Zoo, who's gonna be he'll you know, box from the outside, inside, hit hard, work the body, and then they get got like a slab of body right there in front of Right. And on top of yeah, on top of that, Pandora's coming off a brutal knockout loss to Brian Mendoza. So that's another thing too. It's like it's not like he at least got a win to at least get his confidence back or at least get on the ledger. You know, but yeah, it you're facing someone who's now who's punching incredibly hard that who's like who's pretty much being seasoned right now and Beth yes I agree Fondora is good but Tim is gonna work them body shots yeah yep yep yeah like I mean Fondora's gonna last as long as he can take the punishment like he's he's, he's gonna go to war on the inside with with Tim and he'll realize that's not really a good idea and Tim's gonna eventually take his body pause and then, <laughs> and then eventually, you know, and then they, like take his jaw off. Like, so it's like. But let me ask you this. Okay, okay, fuck all that. Like, the, if, if, if you have an input, like, say, say this is one of those Andre Berto fights where he has a chaotic corner mm -hmm. and you got three niggas in the corner telling him to do, tell, telling him what to do. And you're we translating that energy to Fondora, and you're a voice in the corner, and you're six four, and everybody's like, you know what? I'm gonna let this big motherfucker speak. What are you telling Fondora to do to win this fight? Since it's a bad idea to be on the inside, a uh, zoo pause. Tie him up, <laughs> rough him up, and yeah, he he too needs to go to the body, <laughs> go to Tim's body. But that that's it. Just go to the body and rough him up and tie him up. He's gonna need to because like because if he doesn't But does that win rounds though? Like can you win a fight doing that? Fandora's gonna have to be very physical, pause. Like yeah. very physical. Okay, we know that. Like, but can that what can he do besides being more physical that'll help him with like we know he can't fight on the outside. The inside is like 50-50, really. And he's not stronger than Zeus, so you know. When I hear the whole, well, damn, you know, that's a bad idea going on inside. Then what can this nigga do? Like, how can I mean, he win the fight? I don't, I don't think there's much he can do. I don't think he's gonna win this fight. Okay, <laughs> okay, see, that's that's what it is. Like, yeah, like that's what I'm just saying. Like, because if he can't win on the inside, or if he can't be competitive on the inside, then what the fuck else y'all expect him to do? Then, like, that's it. The problem is, Fedor is just too hittable. His style, he gets hit too much. And Thank you. usually guys that get that guys with his style that get hit a lot, once they end up getting knocked out, they end up getting knocked out easier going forward. Like once that once it's cracked, yep. it's cracked. For mm -hmm. if if you want for, you know recent ex examples, look no further than Adam Kalnaki. Kalnaki was a guy that took punches on punches on punches, walked through punches until he didn't. And now he can't anymore. And he went from getting knocked out to getting knocked out to getting knocked out over and over again, like by lesser guys every time out. Or, or in this case, you can go to you can also look at Jerron on Cajas. You know those two pull up fights, which in real time I was saying like, yo, he's taking way too much punishment. And then you know you have Monster's brother knocking him out with one body shot. Yep. Like, who the That's fuck? Who thought he thought he would do that shit? It blew another up example. Away was that another example was. One, uh, Jared Hurd. Jared Hurd was damn Jason Voorhees at one point, just walking through everything, walking through everything until he got cracked. 
and then it was he was never the same. He couldn't he couldn't just walk through punches anymore. It just doesn't yeah. happen. Once it's cracked, you're cracked. J Rock so, into that. I mean, it wasn't KO. And, and with his style and with Zoo style, Zoo's gonna get him out of there. He's not yeah. gonna be able to take uh, to handle uh, Zoo's uh, pressure pause and just he's gonna work the body and he's gonna line him up. I mean, that, that, there's going to be an overhand right that that, that sends him uh, to the canvas. Yeah. I say I say round seven. I think he gets him out of there at seven. I think six. I, I think it's, I think I think it's going to be a I think it's going to be a KO of the year candidate. I I, I honestly think Fedora says going to be like a fucking pest dispenser <laughs> once he gets Nigga, yeah, we might see a, a Ann Wolf uh, Vonda Ward type KO from these motherfuckers. Yeah. Like you gonna yeah. see like. Timber. We were waiting for him. Mendoza kind of got it a little bit, but yeah, this will be the proper and wolf shit. <laughs> this will be the proper version. I mean, Mendoza kind of got it, but it was like it was more so we didn't expect it. We didn't expect like, it. it was like, no, no, but, not, but and that was a fight where Fondora was winning, was handily was winning. He was winning, and like Fondora could have literally could have aimed for a stoppage the, the way he fight. was winning. Know. It was pretty boring until that that KO, but that KO made it. Been, Mendoza, all Mendoza was just tough, and he would take his little shots whenever the openings were presented. And then when the best opening presented itself, he gave himself his best shot, and the rest is history. You know, the uppercuts and shit is good, but when you're not bringing your hands back and you're leaving your hands down, you're leaving windows for niggas to damn skull fuck your shit and. Mm-hmm. That's what happened. So, but uh, I don't even think Zoo gonna have to counter like that. Like Zoo just gonna just steamroll this dude. Yeah, he's, like, he's, he's got he's got line up. Look at like, like five he, rounds, honestly. He's got line up like how he did Tony Harrison. Just you know, keep that left hand out there mm-hmm. and just just throw all these roundhouses and then eventually throw a whole series of uppercuts because you know Fondora's gonna get hit by these by these uppercuts. Like it's gonna be. And that's the thing, Fondora got a good uppercut too. Like, yeah, I need to see an uppercut battle. I need to see like, oh, you like from both of these niggas, like real shit. Yeah, but and, yeah, and, yeah, and the uppercut is definitely Fondora's strongest punch. But yeah, and I do think if he if he does land, if he starts landing them on Zoo, then you know that wouldn't be <laughs> that, that that wouldn't be a good thing for Zoo either. Because yeah, Fondora does that have uppercut more. hook combo, like yeah, if I'm Fondora, I'm spamming them shits. Mm-hmm. Let's do that little Paul Williams clinch uppercut that nigga beat that that dude was good at. Yeah. That whole like, like, bitch, like. So let's see. In terms of props right now, so Fandora is a plus three eighty underdog, Zoo minus five fifty, and with the method of victory, you got Zoo at plus six hundred for decision, minus two forty for the KO, yeah. plus six hundred for the draw, plus six fifty four for Fandora decision. And plus nine hundred for the Fedora K. I, I, I got Costa's son in the, in the ninth round. I think he's going to dig into the body, and uh, you know he's going to go to the invest in the body. I feel like and eventually break down that 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 toothpick long ass you know tall motherfucker. And uh, I think he's going to sit. Up, I think you know it'll, he's going to KO him in emphatic fashion, and we're going to get that Bud Bud Zoo you know fight in the fall or summer or whatever. So yeah, because I mean, one of the things too, because I, I know from Dora for certain, certain people. Like he hurts their feelings because, oh, first of all, the Lubin fight because most people were not happy at what from heard it to Lubin because you know everyone. I everyone, mean, I picked that motherfucker. I, 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 but he didn't pick his face to be this figure like that. Jesus, yeah, yeah, I picked him to get stopped though, nigga. Yeah, like, yeah, fair, 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 <laughs> but yeah. goddamn, that, that motherfucker looked like that nigga from the mask. You know? <laughs> yeah, nobody yeah. figured like, but that's the thing. Nobody thought it would be a fight of the year. Or somebody that looked like the goddamn Dervianchenko. Lubin, Lubin, Lubin dropped, you know, Lubin dropped from Dura too. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Drop. It was a good fight of the year, nigga. Like, it was a great fucking fight. Like, it's just, but that's the thing too. Like, like even the damn with Lubin, like, Lubin ain't been the same. Yeah. Like, with the punches he's taking and shit. So, yeah, like, it's a good ass fuck. Ooh. But yeah, damn, y'all really see this shit going late. I'm, y'all niggas are saying eight rounds, nine rounds and shit. No, I, 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 th- I said six. Six, okay, yeah. I yeah, I, I'd be surprised if it goes past six. I, I'm saying five. I'm saying I mean, seven. seven. I mean, I said, I think the later, the later it goes if with, with Zoo, the worst is going to be for Fedora. Like, honestly, if it goes late, that means Zoo is probably much, either Zoo is struggling 
or he's letting everything yeah. but the kitchen sink is from there somehow absorbing the can shit. Can we get, I know Crawford's not with them, but can we get a, like, you know, main event? Can we get the, the challenger entered the ring? Can we get Crawford in the ring if, you know, Zoo gets knocked out or something? I'm just saying, like, bring that back. That will be fire. Like, I, mm-hmm. I feel like you need to put, like, a, like, like, there needs to be, like, a stamp or something on this that. fight. Because like, boxing, got, you know, the, the shit that got me back into boxing was fucking when Thurman was like, I ain't no cherry, I ain't no cherry son to Danny, you know what I'm saying? Back on free TV, you know, I ain't no cherry, I ain't no cherry, you know, that shit. What the hell happened to the fucking call? Yeah, so that was the good old days when Thurman, you know, and Thurman had, didn't have no seating fair line. And, you Don't know, he fuck was me, <laughs> Yeah, that was I mean, the boxing just need to be on regular TV at this point. Like all this app shit is cool, but yeah. like, at the end of the day, like but this card, like, we was... need at least one good card on like a Fox or if ABC. This card was on Amazon Prime for free. It would do wonders for. I know they didn't make, not make as much money, but it would do wonders for boxing if this was the first card on Amazon Prime for free. It, it, honestly, it need to be for free because none of this is screaming pay per view. Like, mm. like even the parlays ain't screaming pay per view. When when I'm literally <laughs> saying like, hey, look, bro, like. I would have added this to a parlay. Honestly, putting Laura and Cruz is, is its own parlay. <laughs> like, keep that shit away from, like, like honestly, like, this shit, like, I don't know, son, like, real talk, there's a lot of money in boxing, but there's a lot of greed. Where I think sometimes it's better for the expansion is if you just kind of dial back the greed like everything don't need to be pay-per-view or on like y'all niggas got to get these damn network free tv deals popping again bro like <laughs> i don't think people understood how many people was watching them thurman porter swift fights yeah nigga, like four million people was watching them shits you think You're this right. shit gonna get four million pay-per-views you're right like, dude, I had niggas, all types of motherfuckers in the group chat hitting me up like, oh, yo, yo, y'all watching Fox? Yeah. Y'all watching this? Like, yo, these niggas is throwing. Like, what y'all doing? Like, like that that's the shit I need to be getting. Not this shit where it's like, all right, you know, that right, bought me a, a, some socks from Amazon. And, oh, yeah, these niggas boxing. <laughs> like, I get the fuck out of here. Like, yeah, yeah I'm trying to, you know, I'm doing pre, pre-order for, uh, PS5 Pro. That's literally how it be. That's literally how it be. Oh, you know, I'm saying, let me let me get these deodor this deodorant. Let me get these packages of soap. Oh, oh, we got the boxing. Like, oh, face. <laughs> oh, well, which is cool, but which is cool. I'm not denying that that's dope. But like, like Pilot said, like I think the initial one, like like niggas can't be afraid to give shit away. Sometimes I think that's what's that's what's hurting business now. Mm-hmm. Especially with inflation, like niggas feel that they have to make a super big profit off of every little thing they do. Like there's niggas out there back in the day that used to damn like, all right, you know, get that, like right, here, here's some bud, here's some fire, like you know, for try it and, and hit me up when you, when you know what I mean, when you when you ready to really get up, get on it. You trying to make, you know, you trying to make some, you trying to buy some shit. Nigga hit you up next week like yo that shit you gave me last week was fired. Nigga, you got any more? I got like thirty dollars, nigga. I'm saying like business, like put the card out for free, whatever, and and then get everybody's interest, right. and then because now you go now you can sell a zoo bud fight because nigga sold zoo for free, <laughs> and we don't everybody done seen heard known about bud by now, so it's like okay people be like. Hold on, that one nigga who knocked out that basketball player fighting Bud. Okay, uh, I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, was cracking. Like, yeah, yeah, I, I watch that shit. I mean, like, where? That's all. That's all I'm saying. Just a little business shit. I don't mean to digress like that, but that's that's it. I mean, it's part. I mean, it's part of the discussion, bro. Of course, you can digress. Like, you, you, you within the topic, bro. You know, it's, it's a- yeah, I just want to see boxing grow, bro. Like, that's it. Like, the money is good. But yeah, Beth, that's what I'm saying. This should be free. More people will watch it. Like, and, it, and remember, it's the first card. Like, and this isn't no card where it's like the names are like super popping. Where you're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like if okay, you, if you like, open, yeah, if you're open, open like a Tank Frank, I, I get it. If you can open with Frank Tank or something like that, I know he had a legal situation. But if you, yeah. if you had Tank on there, or even Spence on a, I mean, I spent on a comeback, people complain. But you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, name. I just see making making people have to pay. Yeah. 
Same thing with Canelo Monkey, but like Zoo, like the fuck out of here, really? Yeah, Zoo. Yeah, and like I said, I mean, obviously it's like it's gonna be eighty something bucks, seventy nine, eighty something. Bucks hey, eighty for... bucks, nigga. Yeah. Eighty motherfucking dollars, nigga. Like, and we've been getting these goddamn Arabian Night, uh, fucking pay per views for like forty dollars and shit. Yeah. I mean, I know the atmosphere is gonna be better. That's for sure. But goddamn, <laughs> I was waiting like, for nigga, that. Yeah. I mean, I, I, nigga, I see two niggas in the chat fighting the goddamn hallway for ten dollars at this point. Like, <laughs> like yeah. shit. <laughs> I'm just saying, bro. Like, I mean, apparently, I mean, we probably, we probably won't get the free prime car until probably the summertime, anyway. So it's at least probably maybe June might be when we might actually get it. Oh, so it'll be more like a customer appreciation type shit. Like, well, yeah, you've been rocking with us for a while, so yeah. Hey, here's 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 a free pizza, nigga. Like, <laughs> I mean, here's, I was, here's some cheesy sticks, nigga. I mean, I know they're already talking about uh, fucking Tank and, and Frank Martin, and I know that shit's not gonna be free. They're not gonna give that shit away for free. I'd be if they did, that would be like that would be a good look, but they're not gonna give that shit away for free. Nah. You know what? Like, if they were smart, I'm trying to get a no. But they said Boots is gonna be on the Canelo on the card. Like, Boots would have been the nigga. I would have tried to have a for a free card or some shit. Right. right. It's just like Zoo is that guy where young, hungry champion, undefeated. He has several. His name is connected to several other big fighters. Oh, I'm hearing Fulton and Boots will be a non pay per view card in July, I believe. Yeah. I heard some of that too. Then I was hearing boots on the undercard of the Canelo Munguia, so I don't know. But if they have them on a double card like that, they need to be against some good opponents. It can't they be that in Philly. I know. Well, again, like yeah. that. Don't give us no free shit like that. Like if it's free, let it be worthwhile. Don't well, don't, well, don't give us a free Reggie. You know what I mean? Last <laughs> week, boots Crowley was supposed to have the purse, but it got it got pushed back. So either hopefully it's on the Canelo card or maybe on this shit. One of them. We need bo- we need we need boots back. It's kind of trash. He ain't defend his, t- his title or even yeah. Niggas talking about free like like I don't like it. I, don't give me like the free fries from Dollar Tree or or the goddamn Family Dollar. Um, would y'all watch Boots Crowley? <laughs> Boots Crowley? Breezer, give, give me free checkers fries, nigga. Would, you, would y'all watch Ennis Crowley with the comment of Fulton versus Gary Russell Jr.? Fuck yeah, for yeah. free, nigga. Absolutely. You that's the card of the year if it's free. Shit. <laughs> All right. Shit. Gotta <laughs> throw on motherfucking put Mario Barrios against somebody and and and, and, and maybe someone else and you got to a fire ass four you know a, a four quadruple header. Oh, oh, slow down on this Mario Barrios thing. You was flowing for a little bit, bro. But you know, oh, I'm, 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 I'm going <laughs> to need you to calm down with this Mario Barrios. No, oh, no, look, look, look. My only ex- explanation why I said Barrios is because. For some reason, he's one of those guys. Even if you don't want to use Barrios, but the the whole Cito Lopez frame of guys where you know they're gonna have a they're gonna put on a good effort and give you a good fight, no matter who you put them in the ring with. Like that's my whole take. Like if you're, I'm not looking to say I'm not looking to put Thurman, Laura, and Caesar Martinez all on the same card and call it the goddamn Riddler special. <laughs> and see who the fuck's gonna make it to the goddamn uh, opening bell, nigga. No, I'm trying to put together a good quality card where it got some for everybody, got some action and all that shit. Like, goddamn mystery card where it's like, well, nigga, like, let's just roll the dice on this one. Will Thurman get hurt? Will uh, Martinez have visa issues? Will Laura get into a good fight? Hmm. Next time on Ring Gang Radio Fighter Z, nigga, like, <laughs> fuck that. Like, nah. But yeah, I ain't got nothing else to say about this car. We can we can talk about something else now. Like. Yeah, you know. You know.